uh, using the internet is just getting to know a lot of the people out there to be able to ask a question out on the internet and be able to receive 10 answers from people that you'll never meet but they're from all over the world. It has access to people like architects and lawyers that um, can tell me a bit about um, what they do. You know, you've got people in the U.S., people overseas. It's, I mean, it's, it's a really great place to, you know, interchange ideas. By using the email, you get to talk to different people and you get to learn about different cultures, different communities, and different ways that they do certain things that you might not do. The amount of information that's out there and how you can so easily access something, I find amazing. The students and teacher you just met are talking about a tool that is revolutionizing education. It's the Internet, the world's largest computer network. With it, you have a gateway to a virtually endless source of information. In some ways, the Internet is like the phone system, but instead of using one of these to connect to people around the country and the world, you use one of these, a computer. And instead of using your voice to communicate, you type and click. In the next few minutes, you'll learn how tapping into the Internet is benefiting educators and students in countless ways. Well, email, that's really cool to use because you can send, we can send stuff like to Kid Cafe and Kids Net and also to our pen pals. For a while, we were receiving some messages from um, this man down in Antarctica. He was studying animals and the life down there. And um, it was really interesting. He was telling one story about how he walked outside and a whole bunch of penguins just came up and like came up really close to him. And he was amazed that he, they weren't afraid. One of our kids wrote to a teacher in Ireland and got back just pages and pages and pages of this very enthusiastic person, only too thrilled to talk to someone in California. And this little child's face just lit up. I mean, they couldn't believe somebody was that interested in what they had to say. One day we went to school and we looked on and we checked our email and we found that we had a message from my dad. And we sent one back and then he sent one back to us again. So we're probably going to keep on doing email with my dad for a long time. Electronic mail or email combines the speed of a phone call with the content of a letter. You write what you have to say and send it to an internet address or mailbox. Your message and any other information you include with it is delivered almost immediately. But the internet does much more than just allow you to communicate on a one-to-one -one basis. We can also use a program called Ask a Scientist and we just put a request out there for information on whatever subject. And they have mailboxes that deal with physics, biology, astronomy, a number of different areas. And our science teachers who have seen that have got very excited. And we get to ask a scientist one-on-one -on -one the answers to our questions. I use NASA Space Link for finding information about the moon um, to do a moon report. And I use Archie to do a lot of the searches for pictures and text files on different subjects. Uh, recently, a couple of other students were interested in studying uh, hurricanes. And instead of going to the library and reading about Hurricane Camille, which happened in 1968, they were able to access images and information about Hurricane Andrew, which happened just a few months ago. Virtual reality isn't something you can normally find in a library because the technology is relatively new. Um, but the internet had a lot of stuff on it. The newest book on telecommunications in our library was from 1958, and that didn't give me much information about what's going on right now. And students are free to research and explore ideas that are immediate. We don't have to wait for publication of information. You have to think of the internet as a resource, like the library. It's just another resource that you have at your fingertips that you can use. A resource similar to a library. But unlike most libraries, the internet offers you the most current information available. And if you need to go beyond what's already there, you may deal with an expert in the field. In addition to words, the internet allows you to access pictures, computer software, scientific data, sound and video files, any digital information your computer can understand. It's awesome, the power of the internet, but how you harness that tremendous power will depend on the computer you have 
and the software you use. When you're learning, it's hard for the first five or ten minutes, but then after, after you, when you're doing the same process, you know, you just get used to it and stuff. I've just decided to jump in like the kids have, and I've made some mistakes and <laughs> messed things up, but it doesn't matter. It's the learning process and the ex exploration process. You can always ask questions and people are always helpful in answering them because they were where you were. One of the things I like about using internet is that there are no accents when students write through email or request messages. So suddenly, a child that you're communicating with is of value and of importance to you, not by how they look and not by what they have, but by the information that they're sharing with you. Sharing is a key word when you think of the Internet. Because when you begin to use it, you find that you don't just take what you need. You end up contributing what you have to offer. Now, how does the Internet fit into the changing world of classroom education? I think that the Internet and being connected with the, the resources that are there is going to revolutionize the way that we teach children. Uh, I think the teachers become learners themselves. No longer does the teacher have the responsibility of imparting all the knowledge and the information, but together we're empowered to explore new ideas and new information. Allowing the students to become researchers, it, then you can treat the type of teaching that you do entirely differently than you would in a normal classroom. Students are being given more initiative. Um, they're working on projects that they choose and the teacher is becoming more a facilitator. This change in the classroom is influenced the most by what students will face when they enter the workforce. Teachers in the past have been very, very isolated work units. Uh, you've been in a classroom, a box, so to speak, and you barely had time to talk to other teachers in your building during the day. Uh, right now, the, educa the educational community is a fairly isolated event. The school is isolated, the teachers are isolated, the students are isolated, and that isn't the way the real world works. We have to get education, what the kids are doing in school, much closer to, to the work environment. So where workers are now working in teams, solving problems, we want the kids to be able to uh, work in teams and solve problems. I think it's the change element that we really have to prepare them for. I don't think we can even teach them everything they need to know, but we can teach them to adapt to the process of change. It's easy for educators and students to become sold on the benefits of the Internet. Without support from parents and the community, though, no educational tool can be successful. In every community we visited, low-income, middle-class or wealthy, rural and urban, support for the Internet is common. My parents love it. My parents really, really love all this. Every time that I learn something new or or get, into, get more involved, I run home and tell them and they, they love it. Parents have been very supportive. They've been very amazed. Parents come in and watch and they get all excited and they want to find out how you do that. They like that the children um, have been writing back and forth and responding to questions. Communicating one-to-one, -one, access to endless amounts of information, and the tools to harness that information. This is the power needed to thrive into the next century. And this is what the Internet is giving classrooms throughout the country. Now, at the beginning of this tape, we compared the Internet to the phone system. And you probably can't imagine living without the benefit of a telephone. Now I know that once you begin using the Internet, you'll wonder how you got along without it.